Welcome to GV247.tv, the Global Vision Channel. A non-profit web TV channel bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. Hello and welcome to the weekend show on Global Vision TV at GV247.tv or GlobalVisionTV.tv. My name is Deborah Menelaus and with me is my beloved husband Stuart. And we want to extend our greetings to you all for this new year, 2020, yeah. because we've been away for a long time. Yeah. But you know what? We're back, newly invigorated and strengthened. I have to say, we thank you all, but we'll tell you about that later. So, my beloved, despite this long rest over Christmas and January, um, we've been rather busy. So we started 2020 with a bang. And when I say we, I mean the world. Um, as the media reported trouble in the Middle East with Iran and the USA was coming close to war with them. And of course, we saw the tragic loss of life, both human and animal, in the Australian fires. Whilst meanwhile, the USA, Israel and the UK are going through major upheavals politically. And now the headlines scream out that we have another deadly disease spreading from China, which is causing panic. You know, even our local pharmacy has sold out of face masks. But a big side effect is that the economy has taken a real knock too. Now, this means that prophecy watchers, which I suppose we really have been since the 1980s, are watching closely. So that's something we're going to take a close look at later to see if there's any truth in the claim that these are signs of this age coming to a close. On a cheerier note, uh, uh, we will have in due course our intrepid roaming evangelist James Jarvie in the studio. Now, not long back uh, from a trip in the Ukraine. That's right, Eve yeah. went to the Ukraine. Oh, th I, this is going to be real fun when you... So many stories. And... Uh, while he was there, he joined a prison outreach team, and it really is wonderful yeah. uh, to see the gospel of Jesus Christ being taken to locations like that, and more of that to come. Yes. Now, we're only going to be able to show you uh, a few wee clips, which you can see here. Uh -huh. uh, we have to be careful what we're allowed to show, yes. but uh, at the end of the day, it's very exciting, yes, it's it very is. encouraging seeing the gospel taken into places like this. Absolutely. You know, I'm looking forward to that, so we're hoping to interview him next week. Um, now, Stuart, you've also got some updates about the website to tell us yeah. about. Uh, now, as mentioned before, we've been doing a lot of restructuring, and this uh, has really taken up a lot of our time, but it was absolutely essential. Uh, given the way the internet functionality keeps changing. So we have a new Who is GV247.tv video clip. So have a good look at that. And, uh, or should I say, it's been amended and updated uh, to bring up to date the way the new site functions. Now, we're several weeks into the new year. We continue to look to the Lord in regard to direction. And to begin, we need to take time out to listen with great care. Now, Stuart, you have many thoughts about this, don't you? Mm. Well, sure, nothing new. What is uh, always impressed on me and continues to be at the forefront of my understanding is the need to be prayerful. Yeah. Accruing knowledge is, of course, important, but faith without deeds is dead. So we've spoken about this in previous programmes. We need to take time out to meet with our Heavenly Father every day. So it, it's about relationship, isn't it? Absolutely. Now, find a place of quiet and take time to talk with your Father in Heaven. And for that, I want to recite a beautiful psalm, and it's Psalm 5. Mm -hmm. Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my lament, hear my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. And that's Psalm 5, 1 to 3. Now notice what the psalmist says there, and wait expectantly. 
you know, that's something we often miss out in our times with the Lord is the waiting upon him. We're, we're so quick to, to talk to him and give him our requests and tell him our, our woes. And there's a place for that. And then but, move on. Yeah, but we need to listen. We need to listen. You know, that's something you often see as well, Stuart, is um, um, people maybe opening up um, a session, or, you know, people on a platform and they'll pray and they're, they've barely even said their amen and they're looking into their notes. We need to wait reverently before mm. the Lord. Mm. Wait upon the Lord. Absolutely. Those those verses, that's just the first three verses of Psalm 5. There's a lot more, but they really touch my heart deeply. Mm. Now, although I'm in Ecclesiastes in my own quiet time just now, it's a wee bit of a challenge, mm. but I've been going over Psalms 3, 4 and 5 a lot at the moment. I just keep being drawn back to some of these verses. And I really want to share this with you out there watching. Now, you know, I'm thinking of you, Madeline and Babs, Stacey, Virginia, Pat, Kath, El Sabi, Shirley, Peter, Margaret, Tricia, Elaine. There's there's many, many more of you who often lack fellowship with other strong believers Mm. or because of other circumstances, you can feel very, very alone. So let me encourage you to read and ponder over these Psalms. Now, I know that many are sorely tried by family circumstances, unsaved loved ones in particular. Now, not only spouses, but the pain of children and even grandchildren who've lost their way. Mm -hmm. Imagine how David from the Old Testament must have felt when he was being pursued by his own son, Absalom. In Psalm 3, verses 3 to 5, he cried out to God, But you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, Mm. and the one who lifts my head. And I love that. He is Mm. the lifter up of your head. Mm. And David continues, he says, To the Lord I cry aloud, and he answers me from his holy mountain, Selah. Mm. Think about this. And he says, I lie down and sleep. I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. Now, it's those who know their God who shall do great and valiant things. Mm. And Daniel writes this in chapter 11. It's part of verse 32. And there's very, there's various translations. But somebody once wrote that in a piece of paper and I kept it in my wallet. Those who know their God shall do great and valiant things. I know that for many of you, just getting out of bed in the morning can feel like a huge achievement. But you're here. Praise his wonderful name. Well, as you say, there are many brothers and sisters in Christ who struggle with various challenges every day. Yet, this is where we must persevere. Mm -hmm. This is where we must overcome. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne, Revelation 3.21. Is it easy? Well, the honest answer is, of course not. No, it's not easy. Yet the Lord knows every step we take, every thought we think, and because of his love for us and our love for him, he will turn to the good, whatever we face. Romans 8, 28. Whether we're in, the, uh, whether we're in a, a dark place or a good place, we must learn to be faithful. This is the key word here. We must learn faithfulness in all circumstances. Faithfulness Perseverance produces character. Remember Mm -hmm. Revelation 17, 14. When the Lord comes, he will be accompanied with his chosen, called and faithful followers. Amen. Now, thinking about this, relationship with God means separation from the world. And dozens of scriptures spring to mind, of course. We are in the world, though not of it. We've been taken out of the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of light. So we can't serve two masters, Mm -hmm. especially when scripture is clear that Satan is the god of this world. Now, that's several scriptures right there. You can read John 15, 19 and 17 verses 14 to 16, Romans 12, 2, Ephesians 4 verses 22 to 24, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1, many, many other verses. 
But let's hear what our dear brother Chris Lawson of SRN explained this, as he explains this more fully on Channel 18 of the Bible. Here he is talking about biblical separation. I grew up in a church that I had no idea what biblical separation was until many years later. It's the idea that we separate as Christians from worldly influences, worldly philosophies, uh, worldly practices that would be brought into the church from the world or the secular society. Such things as, for instance, I'll throw this out, yoga, okay? Is yoga Christian? Well, no, it comes from a Hindu occult worldview perspective. It's not Christian by any means. And so when we talk about biblical separation or biblical holiness, living a holy life, the idea is to be set apart as a Christian so that we don't, you know, uh, use the word that pollute our Christianity or bring in these foreign thoughts. Another thing uh, is, for instance, rock and roll music. Okay, a lot of people are bringing rock and roll music into the church and thinking that they can infuse this into worship music as far as focusing on the Lord God Almighty in heaven and coming at it from a crazy rock and roll type mindset and then bringing them together. You can't really fuse the two together because they come from different backgrounds. And so I'd like to read a verse to you and just share with you uh, what the scripture says. Now, this is from the book of 2 Corinthians and Paul is talking to the church at Corinth about being separate from the pagan practices. The context here has to do with Christian marriage and not marrying a non-believer. God teaches that you know, a Christian should not marry a non-Christian and what do light and darkness have in common and such. And Paul continues on here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, and he says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, quote, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. End quote. Therefore, quote, Come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Now, a lot of people miss this next point in chapter 7. They just stop right there because it's a chapter break. But it says, therefore. Anytime you see the word therefore in Scripture, you must go back the previous verses and find out why is the therefore there for. So Paul the Apostle says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of flesh, of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Okay, his whole mindset here is, look, you're a Christian now, okay? You're separate from the world. I have prepared a bride for you. He's saying, come out and be separate. And do not touch what is unclean. You know, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So it's a, it's a biblical principle I'm trying to communicate here. Some people call it biblical separation. Some people call it biblical holiness. Some people say it's holy living or being having a sanctified life, okay? Now, I want to share also that God created the heavens and the earth using separation, right? God created the heavens and the earth. He separated the light from the darkness. He separated the elements. He separated, you know, there's a species, there's a different species, there's night, there's day. God used separation in the creation account. He separated the waters from the land, okay? And so the atmospheres as well, right? The higher atmosphere, the lower atmosphere. So there's this idea that God is using separation and that is all through the creation account of separation. Okay. Now, when God called the Hebrews to come out, he called Abraham to come out of the Ur of the Chaldees, God separated Abram, renamed him Abraham, and God separated him. Thus we have the Hebrews, the Jewish nation, the ethnic Jews. And God said, be ye separate, for I am separate. Come out from among them. The idea here is that God is holy, he's set apart, and he is to be worshipped a specific way. All right, we see in the Old Testament, King Solomon 
was separated unto the Lord, and yet he allowed his many foreign wives to worship false gods, to worship with the pagan religions. And Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived aside from Christ, okay, Jesus was fully God and fully man. Solomon wasn't. Yet Solomon built altars in the high places for his foreign wives who were pagans, who were non-Hebrews, okay? And it pulled Solomon backwards. It defiled him. It ruined him. And so this is with the nation of Israel, God says, be separate. I am to be worshiped a specific way. Do not worship like the Gentiles or the non-Jewish world, okay? Now, we're in the church age now, from Pentecost up until the Lord takes the bride of Christ home to be in heaven. And God says, be separate. So as the church, as Christians, and when I say Christian, I'm going to qualify that as true, Bible-believing, Spirit-filled Christians who rely upon Jesus Christ alone for salvation, by grace alone we're saved, okay? God calls us out to be separate from the world. Now we go back to bringing yoga into the church and Reiki into the church, energy work channeling types of things, occult types of practices that we find in India amongst the Buddhists, uh, in Asia and, and Hindu yogis and whatnot. And, and a lot of Christians are thinking that we can begin to integrate these into our Christian lifestyle. Well, they might say, oh, it's just yoga, or it's just energy work, or it's just ther it's therapeutic. Oh, I would go back and say, wait, let's take a look at what is the world view. What is that concept of God? Why are we mixing this with our Christianity? I'll give you an illustration. The, the Olympics. How many Olympic athletes through the centuries have practiced yoga to try to get into shape as best as they can, to be the most physically fit human beings on planet Earth? Well, I don't know how many have tried to do yoga to do that. In our day and age, it's popular. But do we need to do yoga to be absolutely 100% physically fit? No, we don't. Do we need Christian yoga to be absolutely physically fit? No, we don't. We don't. Absolutely not. And so, yeah, that's, that's not necessarily a biblical argument, but the, the argument here from the Bible is God says be separate. Come out from among them. Don't integrate your Christian walk with God with these other belief systems. Be separate. What, what do these things have in common as Christians, uh, for us as Christians, with the non-Christian world? And I'll go one step further. In the book of Leviticus, God warns very clearly about integrating the occult type of practices with the Hebraic belief system. There's, a, there's what's called spiritual defilement. Now, people think, well, I can't be defiled. Now I'm a Christian. You know, those were Old Testament promises or, 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 or you know, condemnations from God. Well, yes, actually, we can become very defiled as Christians if we yield ourselves to people who are involved with different belief systems and bringing occult practices into the church. So essentially, at the end of the day, God says, be separate, be set apart for Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, verse 17. Jesus said, he prayed, he said, Father, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Hence, taking us back to the word of God, Jesus wants us to be taught his teachings and the apostles' doctrine, teaching and being taught by the word of God and forsaking these practices that would essentially, at the end of the day, defile the Christian walk, the Christian heart and mind and the lifestyle. We hope that's encouraged you in your walk this year. Now, before we go to hear what we've been up to in the studio last year, so let's take a look at uh, one of these signs of the times that I referred to the start of the program. Now, as I said, the headlines are focusing on the coronavirus. And by the time you watch this, whether it's in February of 2020 or sometime long afterwards, where the true nature of what is being called a potential ban pandemic will be more fully known by you, mm. I want to lay a couple of rumours to rest. So first of all, no, it is not caused by or have anything to do with the Mexican beer, OK? or it's a lagger for those who are pedantic. And it most certainly doesn't hit those who enjoyed the flavoured sodas of the 70s. And for the people who panicked, thinking that they had discovered a great Illuminati plot to destroy us all when they found that the virus was already mentioned on antibacterial sprays, I think it would be good to explain a little more to hopefully put your minds at rest a little. 
You know, the word corona is well known in astronomy. It is the, the glowing circle that you can see around the sun during an eclipse. And it's also a word used in many other situations. In fact, we get the word crown from it. And this virus has a crown. And it's a crown of sugary proteins that project from it. And that's how it got its name. Now, this latest version is called the Wuhan coronavirus and was actually discovered last year in that Chinese province. And I'm sure you all know about that by now. And some are saying that this Wuhan variation may have started with snakes. However, the, the, the virologist David Robertson at the University of Glasgow says that that's highly unlikely. And they're now looking at many, many other aspects of it. Now, there are many more questions and answers. And as you're probably sick of the whole subject, you may be asking, why are we two talking about it so much? But the reason I'm explaining in detail is that having at least a little understanding can help allay fear. So I want to use this opportunity to point you to our genetics channel, number 11, where we have lots of very short films from experts explaining lots of interesting things from a truly scientific biblical perspective and that can help you be better informed on all sorts of subjects. It will give you an understanding of what's behind this. Now Stuart, you and I have, we've learned over the years not to jump on every little event and shout about doom and gloom. We know a song about that. But our call to sound the alarm includes most of all the entreaty to draw closer to the Lord and his word. In Revelation 6, John describes the vision of seven seals being opened. Now, the first four are horsemen who ride out and they may correlate to Jesus' warnings in Matthew 24, etc. But it is the fourth one which mentions plagues and pestilence. And we're nowhere near that yet. However, as we pointed out earlier, a side effect of many of these events is a huge burden on the economy. So many of these catastrophes can certainly lead towards peace being taken from the earth, which is the second seal, and ultimately the famine mentioned in the third. Now, I know that Stuart and I have taken a study of Bible prophecy or eschatology as a serious subject, and we've studied it for over 30 years because Jesus himself calls it the gospel of the kingdoms. Now, the warnings of which must go throughout the whole earth before he returns. But the idea behind it is to tell the church to wake up up for he's coming soon and to tell the world that they need to get into the ark which is Jesus that judgment is coming upon the earth and they do not want to meet that judge so in the midst of the trauma is there a message of hope Stuart? Well I can only repeat uh, what I said earlier uh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who is the way the truth and the life John fourteen six, mm. and put into action all that he commands John fourteen fifteen. Yeah. Well, I was going to talk about man flu, but I think we'll skip over that because yeah. we really are running right. out of time. Um, that's because you're Silly a man. Thing. So, I don't believe in that anyway. <laughs> well, it is. Ladies have colds, but men have flu. But you know what? It's a much more serious thing now. Um, we've both spent eleven days um, yeah. on our backs with flu, so it's nothing to joke about now. But listen, just to put things in perspective. Flu makes you very ill and it is a killer. The 1918 flu epidemic is estimated to have affected half the world's population and it killed 40 to 50 million people worldwide. Now, the World Health Organization estimates that it kills between a quarter and half a million people around the world every year. So it's not something to be taken lightly and it puts the coronavirus scare into perspective. So, to finish, Stuart, can you, do you want to give a very quick update of what you've been up to? Well, uh, it's been a busy time uh, as we begin to bring the latest documentary to completion. Once again, uh, we're limited about what we can say uh, at the moment, mm -hmm. but it, uh, it does involve the challenges facing many parents of young children due to changes in education. It's a 25 minute film bringing together a body of professionals within the fields of medical and science and uh, with the addition of around 20 short films within the extras section. So it's, it's got a lot of information. 
And at present, it's being checked over by a, a board and uh, the required legal due diligence is having to be done. But we hope to be able to bring you a trailer very shortly and in due course, the actual documentary itself, which will incidentally be freely available in DVD and digital download. So mm. more to come uh, on that mm. important issue. And uh, a quick note to encourage folks to watch and share the feature film The Daniel Connection, which is freely available on Amazon Prime TV in all major English-speaking territories throughout the world. We've had a number of reports of individuals being brought to Christian faith through the film, so please do help promote the film by watching and giving a review on Amazon Prime. Frighten the children, the women, we have a bell in the door, you know. You've been arrested for subversive behaviour, preaching radical religious propaganda. What we were doing when you... Gatecrashed my little cottage was simply having a time of Bible study and a time of fellowship. Yes, brainwashing people with your extremism. That's not true. The Bible is an open book. It's not imposed on anybody. It's a book of hatred and bigotry. There's not a shred of evidence to suggest that we're either subversive, that we're bigots, or that we're filled with hate. The central theme of the Bible, as we've said, is the fact that Christ died. Why did he die? Not only because he loved us, but that his Christian people would exhibit love to others. Where's the love spread by religious extremists carrying out bomb attacks? All in the name of God. Now, a quick reminder, the Lamplight Study Fellowship started back on Monday as they continue into Section 10, Part 7, which is warnings to the church. And next week, they move on to Section 11, which is about the early church and biblical interpretation. It might sound uninteresting to some Christians, but it's a really important topic. Absolutely, it is. And uh, it's, it, why it's so interesting is because it gives you an understanding on how people began to change the way they understood the scriptures, which would then give rise to cult groups and other forms of false doctrines. So it's not to be missed. Amen. So until next week, thank you for watching. Thank you for praying for us. And may God bless you and yours yes. throughout the rest of Amen. this year. God bless. God bless. This is GV247.TV, bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. A powerful free resource with hundreds of short films on a wide range of Bible topics from experts around the world, plus full-length sermons and programs for teaching and encouragement. Choose from current affairs, signs of the times, a chance to voice your own opinion and special offers on our full-length feature films, documentaries and study materials. At over four hours in length, The Lamplight Project is a systematic 12-part Bible study series, a powerful teaching tool that begins with the origins of life and takes the viewer on a comprehensive journey packed with high-profile interviews, film, graphics and illustrations, concluding with the return of Christ and an encouragement to stand firm and be faithful. Complete with a free study guide download for both personal and group study, this powerful interactive guide connects to over a thousand programs with expert interviews on GV247.TV, our free service web TV channel. Does My Life Have Meaning? A powerful one-hour presentation produced from the Lamplight Project. With a free copy of the Gospel of Luke, this film is crammed with engaging interviews, film and graphics. A life-challenging film to those searching for answers. As distributors for the Jesus film, we offer this timeless movie based on Luke's Gospel. This clear presentation of the life of Jesus Christ has been viewed worldwide and translated into over 1,200 languages. We provide the film with a free copy of the Gospel of Luke. The Daniel Project is a popular TV documentary that presents an overview of Bible prophecy and an encouragement to read the signs of the times. Hailed as one of the best TV films to be made on the subject, DVD extras feature a heart-to-heart -heart interview about the way of rescue. Based loosely on the documentary, The Daniel Connection is a full-length feature film. 
this fictional thriller incorporates many of the themes promoted through pop culture and social media which affect people on a global scale. Launched at the Cannes Film Festival, The Daniel Connection points the ever-skeptical viewer to search the Bible for answers to life's deepest questions. We've been serving the body of Christ for over 30 years, and if you would like further information, please do not hesitate to get in touch. <laughs>